Want to speak real Polish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at polishpod101.com. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Polish Top Words. My name is Marzena, and today we will learn top 10 must-know vocabulary for the restaurant. So our first word is kelner, waiter, and it's a masculine noun. So, for example, um, if a waiter is very rude, you can say Ten kelner jest bardzo niegrzeczny. Ten kelner jest bardzo niegrzeczny. This waiter is very rude. And our next word is kelnerka, waitress. So, kelner is the masculine form, while kelnerka is the feminine. For example, you can say, Ile zarabia kelnerka? Ile zarabia kelnerka? How much money does a waitress make? So, in general, the service in Poland is not that bad, uh, but um, sometimes you may be unhappy with something, and if that's the case, it's okay not to tip, because the waiter or the waitress, they usually earn enough to cover um, their salary, but a rule in Poland would be to tip more or less uh, 20, 15, 20 percent. Uh, but it's obviously up to you. So if you are more than happy with the service, you can go for 20%. If you are not so happy, you can go for 10 or or just leave. Nobody will be angry at you. Our next word is almost the same as the English one, and it's menu. Menu. And with so many different restaurants, maybe um, there is some food you don't eat, something you don't like. And there is like vegetarian menu, and there is a vegan menu, and there is of course all the other types, like pescatarian menu. So, uh, for example, when you walk into a restaurant and you are not so much into fi into fish or meat, you can just ask, Czy mają państwo menu vegetariańskie? Do you have a vegetarian menu? And surprisingly, even though Polish cuisine is so heavy on meat, we do have plenty, and I mean plenty, vegetarian restaurants all over, spread all over the Poland, but especially in Warsaw. Warsaw is being known as European capital of vegetarian food and vegan food. And of course, one of the very important words when you're in the restaurant is zamówienie, order. Zamówienie, order. So, zamówienie comes from a, a verb zamawiać, which means to order. So, in English, it's the same, basically almost the same word. It's just noun and a verb, order and to order. In Polish, it's zamówienie as the noun and zamawiać as the verb. So, um, the waiter can come to your table and ask, Czy mogę przyjąć zamówienie? May I take your order? Another very important word, uh, not only for restaurant, but in general, is woda, water. Woda means just water, and I know that in some countries you can get water for free in a restaurant, but in Poland it's, you pay for it always. Be careful when you order it, just check on the menu what the price is, because it can be actually pretty high, almost the same as juice or, or even beer sometimes. And we do have both sparkling and non-sparkling water. It's very popular. Both are. Uh, so, for example, if you, if you are the kind of person who doesn't like sparkling water, you would like to ask for non-sparkling one. You would say, Poproszę wodę niegazowaną. I would like to have non-sparkling water. And of course, when you finish the meal, the most important thing is... Deser. Deser. Deser, you probably feel like you've heard it somewhere because it sounds so much like the English word. Deser is dessert. Dessert. Deser. So when the waiter or the waiters will be taking your order, they will probably ask at the end, Czy życzy sobie pani coś na deser? Would you like something for the dessert? So we've got a lot of different desserts in Poland and one of the most famous one would be charlotka, which is an apple pie served with, with ice cream and with wiped cream. Um, 
another very good one, but available, I think, only for Christmas, is the Popsit cake, which is the best for me. I like my, my favorite dessert ever. And of course, there is a lot of other pies. There's a wonderful cheesecake, very different from what, we, what you will see in all the other countries. Uh, so please be sure to try it out. Chef Kuchni. Chef. So if you uh, go with your friends to this very nice restaurant and you know that the chef here is very, very famous, you can say in Polish, Chef Kuchni w tej restauracji jest bardzo znany. The chef in this restaurant is very famous. Fast food. Fast food. Which is just fast food. Um, I guess the accent is more like Polish. And then another thing is that, you know, that in Polish we change nouns, we change the endings. So even though it's a, an English word, we would still change it. So it's like fast food, uh, fast food, fast food. So even though it's an English word, we'll still change it. Like fast food sometimes would just become fast food. And we do have a Polish type of fast food as well, which is pretty old. Uh, this Polish type, it's actually Polish hot dog. And we still call this hot dog, but there is no, <laughs> and there is no sausage or, or or anything or any meat inside. Uh, it's just mushrooms, and it comes from the time long, long time ago uh, when we literally didn't have uh, meat. It was very difficult to get meat, even though people had money for that, they just couldn't buy it. So. That's the invention of that time, and I still remember it. Oh my gosh, when I was little, I just loved to go with my mom and buy those hot dogs. And we called them hot dogs, but they were like hot dogs with mushrooms. And that's it, just mushrooms, like just the bun with mushrooms. Um, you cannot uh, see them so often anymore. You can still probably when you just look around, uh, but it's not that common anymore. Uh, if you are like me um, and you don't really like fast food, you will say, nie lubię fast foodów. I don't like fast food. Restauracja. Restaurant. And you can already hear it sounds very much like the uh, English word. Restaurant. Because it's restaurant. Restauracja. Restauracja. And I guess you know that a lot of restaurants are being judged by having Michelin star or not having it. Uh, I don't think there is a lot of restaurants in Poland with Michelin star, but the one that do have it, it will be extremely, and I mean like extremely expensive. Nevertheless, if you find one, you can always say Ta restauracja ma gwiazdkę Michelin. This restaurant has a Michelin star. Rachunek, Bill. Rachunek comes from a very old Polish word, which we probably don't use anymore. Um, a verb. Rachować. Rachować means just to count. And right now we would just say liczyć, not rachować. But this word, this its form, it's still there in the word rachunek. Rachunek. And it's also very important to just look at your bill before you go back home because sometimes people may make mistakes on purpose or not on purpose, but just it happens. Uh, and if something is wrong, you can always say, Przepraszam, ale ten rachunek się nie zgadza. I'm sorry, but this bill is not correct. Thank you for watching. This was top 10 must know vocabulary for the restaurant. Be sure to like this video and please tell us in comments what kind of Polish food do you like. And if you want more content like this, please go to polishpod101.com. See you! Cześć! Jestem Joanna. Hi, I'm Joanna. Welcome to PolishPath101.com's Polski w 3 minuty, the fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Polish. In the last lesson, we learned how to introduce ourselves in Polish. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use good manners as we thank people. Gotowi? Are you ready? Let's start! There are two ways to thank someone. Let's start with the easiest one. It's just one word. Dziękuję. Dziękuję. Dziękuję means thank you. When saying thank you very much, you just need to add bardzo. Dziękuję bardzo. 
If we want to thank a friend, usually we use a different, more casual word. Dzięki. Dzięki. Dzięki is very similar to the English thanks. So you shouldn't use it when your friend did something especially nice for you or when the situation is serious. We usually use it to thank for small favors. For example, if a friend bought a drink for us, lent us a pen, help us carry our bags and so on. How do you answer? It's easy. Here are two different ways to do it. The first is nie ma za co. Nie ma za co. This means you're welcome. Nie ma za co can be used with anybody, except in a very formal situation. In such cases, it's better to use this expression. Przyjemność po mojej stronie. Przyjemność po mojej stronie. Literally, this phrase means pleasure is on my side. It's not a very common thing to say among young people or between friends and family members. But it will be considered very good manners if you answer with this expression in a formal situation, such as while talking to your boss or speaking to someone much older than you. You can also simply say it to someone you don't know very well. So when someone says dziękuję to you, you can reply with nie ma za co or przyjemność po mojej stronie. If you hear dzięki, it might be a bit too much to respond to this casual phrase by saying nie ma za co or przyjemność po mojej stronie. So how might you react then? You have two options. First one is just to say nothing. Don't worry, it's a normal thing to do. The second option is to say spoko. Spoko. This means something like it's cool. If you want, you can also answer using this phrase. Nie ma problemu. Nie ma problemu. This means it's no problem. Now it's time for Joanna's insights. If you want to keep it simple, just use dziękuję or dziękuję bardzo when you want to thank someone. It doesn't matter whether the situation is formal or informal. It's always the same. Remember not to say przyjemność po mojej stronie to your friends because it will sound a little bit weird. If someone thanks you saying dzięki, just answer spoko. But please note that these two words are very casual. Dziękuję i do zobaczenia na następnej lekcji. Cześć, jestem Joanna. Hi, I'm Joanna. Welcome to PolishPod101.com's Polski w 3 minuty. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Polish. In the last lesson, we learned how to thank people by saying dziękuję. In this lesson, we will learn some of the most common greetings used in Poland. Gotowi? Are you ready? Zaczynamy! Let's start! There are a few informal greetings in Polish. Cześć! Cześć! Cześć means hi or hello. Another informal greeting is siema. Siema. This phrase also means hi, but it's used only by young people. Another very common greeting is hey. 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 Hey is very easy because it's exactly the same as English hey. All these greetings are very informal and we should only use them with friends or close relatives. Now let's move on to formal greetings in Polish. There are only two that you need to know. We'll start with Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry. Literally, Dzień dobry means good day. We can use Dzień dobry during the whole day from early morning until evening. If it's the evening, we would say dobry wieczór. Dobry wieczór. What should you say when you leave? Polish people usually say do widzenia when living in a formal situation. Do widzenia. Do widzenia means goodbye. If, however, we are saying goodbye to friends or relatives, we can use the informal pa pa. Pa pa. Or simply pa. Now, you can greet people and say goodbye in many different ways in Polish. Let's review them all again. First, formal greetings. Dzień dobry. Use this phrase during the day. Dobry wieczór. Use this phrase in the evening. The informal greetings are Cześć, siema, hej. When living in a formal situation, we say do widzenia. And in an informal situation, it's pa, pa or just Easy, isn't it? 
Now it's time for Joanna's insights. Do you remember Shema? It's an abbreviation of Jak się masz, which means how are you? But we just use it in the same way as hi. It's a very common greeting among young people. You will find as you continue to study Polish that new greetings constantly appear among young people who often come up with new uses for well-known phrases or their abbreviations. See you in the next Polski w 3 minuty lesson. Pa! Cześć! Jestem Joanna. Hi, I'm Joanna. Welcome to polishpod101.com's Polski w 3 minuty. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Polish. In the last lesson, we learned how to count in Polish. I hope you spend some time practicing the numbers, because they will come in handy today. We're going to learn how to go shopping in Poland. Before we go, you need to know how to say how much is it? Ile to kosztuje? Ile to kosztuje? Are you ready to go shopping in Poland? Let's go! You see something you like and want to ask the shop clerk how much it costs. The first thing to say is Przepraszam. Do you remember what that means? Excuse me. Przepraszam, ile to kosztuje? Przepraszam, ile to kosztuje? If we want to be more specific when asking how much is it and refer to a certain type of object, we first need to know if the object is a feminine or masculine object. If it's masculine, add ten when referring to it and ta for a feminine object and then say the noun. For example, a watch is masculine. Zegarek. Przepraszam, ile kosztuje ten zegarek? Excuse me, how much is this watch? Przepraszam, ile kosztuje ten Zegarek and skirt is a feminine noun. Spódnica. Przepraszam, ile kosztuje ta spódnica? Excuse me, how much is this skirt? Przepraszam, ile kosztuje ta spódnica? And finally, if we ask about the price of a few similar items like these t-shirts, these apples, these toys, we have to add te before the noun. For example, Przepraszam, ile kosztują te jabłka? Excuse me, how much are these apples? Przepraszam, ile kosztują te jabłka? At this point, the shop clerk will usually answer by saying just the price of an item. For example, 15 złotych, 100 złotych, or 24,50. What number is 15? Do you remember? Of course, it's 15. Now it's time for Joanna's insights. A quicker and more commonly used phrase is po ile, which literally means how much? Then we just add the name of an item we want to know the price of. For example, po ile te jabłka? Or po ile ten zegarek? Or you can just say po ile and point to the item. Both ways are perfectly fine. Do zobaczyska! Cześć! Jestem Joanna. Hi, I'm Joanna. Welcome to polishpod101.com's Polski w 3 minuty. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Polish. In the last lesson, we learned the phrase Ile to kosztuje? How much is it? In this lesson, let's see how we could answer that question by counting złoty in Polish. In Poland, the currency is the złoty. Literally, it means golden. Let's try to say prices in Polish. Start by saying 26 zł, 50 groszy. 26 zł, 50 groszy. 26 zł, 50 groszy. 
As I said before, Polish currency is the złoty. Every złoty is subdivided into 100 groszy. So we have coins of jeden grosz, dwa grosze, pięć groszy, dziesięć groszy, dwadzieścia groszy, pięćdziesiąt groszy. Then other coins are jeden złoty, dwa złote, pięć złotych. Bills that you can see in Poland are 10 złotych, 20 złotych, 50 złotych, 100 złotych, and 200 złotych. When you want to say something's price, first say the number of złoty and then groszy. Let's try. 34 złote, 60 groszy. 34 złote, 60 groszy. 34 złote, 60 groszy. Get ready for the next example. This one's longer. 9 złotych, 99 groszy. 9 złotych, 99 groszy. 9 Złotych dziewięćdziesiąt dziewięć groszy. That takes a lot of effort to say, doesn't it? You can shorten it by skipping the words złoty and groszy. Nine ninety nine. Dziewięć dziewięćdziesiąt dziewięć. This is what you will usually hear from Polish people when they talk about prices. But we don't omit złoty for full amounts, like dwa złote, osiemnaście złotych, or pięćdziesiąt pięć złotych. Now it's time for Joanna's insights. Poland joined the European Union in 2004, and every member should eventually adopt the euro. However, the plans of joining the eurozone by 2019 seem unlikely. So for the time being, you have no choice but to get familiar with the Polish Złoty. I'll see you in the next lesson. Do zobaczyska! Cześć! Jestem Joanna. Hi! I'm Joanna. Welcome to PolishPad101.com's Polski w 3 minuty. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Polish. In this lesson, we will start a series dedicated to the most common Polish verbs. The ones you will definitely hear all the time. The first verb in our series will be to go. In Polish, we have two different words that have the same meaning in English. The first one is iść, and the second one is jechać. Now, you're probably wondering what the difference between iść and jechać is, since both of them mean to go in English. It's actually very simple. We use iść in situations where you can reach your destination on foot. It also means to walk. But if you need some means of transportation to reach your destination, like when going to the mountains, to the sea, or going on trips, you will use jechać. So imagine your friend asks you, Gdzie jedziesz na wakacje? That means, where are you going for the summer holidays? So if you are going to Germany, for example, you will say, Jadę do Niemiec. So let's break down this answer. First we had jadę, which is I am going. It is the first person form of the verb jechać, to go, in present tense. Then there was do Niemiec, which means to Germany. Jadę do Niemiec. Now let's practice using the verb iść. As I mentioned before, this one is used when we don't really need any means of transportation to get to the destination. So in what situation will we use it? Let's see a few examples. Idę do sklepu. I'm going to a store. Idę do kina. I'm going to the cinema. Idę do kolegi. I'm going to a friend's house. Idę do szkoły. I'm going to school. As you may have noticed, we used Ide, which means I'm going. It's the first person form of the verb iść, then do, which means to, and at the end the name of the destination. 
As you may have noticed, in every sentence above we used DO to link the verb and the name of the destination. In most cases we will use this word, but there are a few exceptions. For example, to say I'm going to the mountains, you don't say jadę do góry. Say jadę w góry. Jadę w góry. Or I'm going shopping will be idę na zakupy. Idę na zakupy. Other examples of exceptions are nad morze to the sea. Na wycieczkę on a trip. Na lotnisko to the airport. Na dworzec to the train station. Now it's time for Joanna's insights. First of all, please remember the difference between the two verbs jechać and iść. When we go out to eat something, we also use the sentence structures we learned in this lesson. For example, if you're going out to eat pierogi, which are Polish dumplings, you will say idę na pierogi. Or if you feel like eating ice cream, then you will say idę na lody. So always start with the first person form of the verb iść, to go. Then use na and after that add the name of the food you will go and eat. In this lesson we learned how to use the verbs iść and jechać. Pa pa! Cześć! Jestem Joanna. Hi, I'm Joanna. Welcome to polishpod101.com z Polski w 3 minuty. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Polish. In the last lesson we learned how to use the verbs iść and jechać, which both mean to go in Polish. In this lesson we will continue our lesson series dedicated to very common Polish verbs. The second verb in our series is robić, which means to do or to make. It's not used as much as in English, but still you will hear it quite often. So imagine a friend asks you, co robisz? That means, what are you doing? If you're out shopping, you would say, robię zakupy. Robię zakupy. So let's break down this answer. First we had robię, which stands for I'm doing. It's the first person form of the verb robić. Then we had zakupy, which means shopping. If you happen to be doing the laundry, you will say robię pranie. Robię pranie. Or you may be doing exercises, so you will say robię ćwiczenia. Robię ćwiczenia. As I said at the beginning of this lesson, we don't use the verb robić as much as we use to do in English. There are just some specific words that require using this verb, like shopping, exercises or laundry. The most common situation when we use the verb robić is when we talk about preparing food. In Poland we usually prepare meals ourselves, so you can hear the question Co robisz dzisiaj na obiad? very often. What are you making for dinner today? Co robisz dzisiaj na obiad? Answering such questions is very easy. Robię pierogi. I'm making dumplings. Robię pierogi. Or robię mielone. I'm making meatballs. Robię mielone. We can also use this structure with words like breakfast, dinner, supper and dessert. For example, I'm making supper will be robię kolację. Robię kolację. Now it's time for Joanna's insights. In Poland it's very popular to throw home parties. We organize them for some special occasions like birthday or Christmas, but also without any occasion. So if you want to tell your friends that you will have a birthday party at your place, you will say robię urodziny w domu. Robię urodziny w domu. Urodziny stands for birthday and w domu for at home. In this lesson we learned how to use the verb robić in many different contexts and I'm sure it will help you a lot. Do zobaczenia! How are your Polish listening skills? First you'll see an image and hear a question. 
Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Kobieta je obiad w restauracji. Co zamówi? Po obiedzie kawa czy deser dla pani? Co jest na deser? Mamy budyn i jabłecznik. Hmm, poproszę kawę. Kawa z cukrem i mlekiem? Poproszę tylko z mlekiem. Co zamówi? Kobieta je obiad w restauracji. Co zamówi? Po obiedzie kawa czy deser dla pani? Co jest na deser? Mamy budyn i jabłecznik. Hmm, poproszę kawę. Kawa z cukrem i mlekiem? Poproszę tylko z mlekiem. You're about to have lunch in a local restaurant. What's included with the main course? What's included with the main course? The sign says, one drink and a dessert are included. Napój i deser są wliczone w cenę. You're about to order your lunch and you're interested in the lunch menu. What does the lunch menu say? What does the lunch menu say? The lunch menu says that today's special is spicy chicken with grilled vegetables. Danie dnia. Pikantny kurczak, grillowane warzywa. There's a notice at the bottom of the lunch menu. What does the notice say? What does the notice say? The notice says there is an extra charge for alcoholic beverages. Dodatkowa opłata. Napoje alkoholowe. You're finished with your meal and you're looking at the dessert menu. What kinds of drinks can you choose with the cake set?
What kinds of drinks can you choose with the cake set? The menu shows that you can choose from coffee or tea. Cava, herbata. You just had lunch, paid and received your receipt. What is marked with a circle? What is marked with a circle? The circled parts of the receipt tell you the subtotal and the total. Suma częściowa, łącznie. Hello everyone, my name is Marzena and today we will talk about something really yummy which is 10 Polish foods. So here we go. The first one is definitely my favorite one, which is barszcz, borszcz. So in English you usually say borszcz and we, we do eat borszcz on special occasions. We don't eat it every day, we don't even eat it every week. Uh, unless you buy yourself instant one, but you don't really make it. You make it, at least at my house, once a year, and that's a very, very special occasion, Christmas, and we, we make it with no meat. Uh, so, for example, uh, you can say, podczas Wigilii je się czerwony barszcz. On Christmas Eve, one eats red borscht, which is totally true. Red borscht or barszcz, barszcz czerwony, czerwony barszcz. It's a special food for Christmas and actually for, for Christmas Eve. And you don't really need to add this red part because when you say barszcz, it's kind of obvious it's red. We do have another one which we called white barszcz or biały barszcz. And that one is usually served for Easter. And if you just say borszcz or barszcz, it's it's always it's always the red one and it's very clear there is almost nothing inside except from uszka 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 which means uh, ear or ears and it's usually some kind of it's something like pierogi kind of like like the dumplings uh, with uh, mushrooms inside which you put inside of barsh please try it at home very yummy another one is very time consuming, so not a lot of people actually make a proper one, but it's bigos, and in English you usually say bigos as well, which is basically um, like a, a stew made out of uh, chopped cabbage and sauerkraut and meat, uh, you, you put mushrooms inside, and you can put some other things like sausages and stuff. Uh, it really differs uh, between different like how houses and um, that's how my mom made it. Uh, sometimes you put plums as well. Um, and the thing is that it takes time to make it. And like, I mean, like it really takes time to make it. So, well, one could say, bigos gotuje się ponad tydzień. It takes over a week to cook bigos, which is true. If you want to do it the traditional way, it really takes up to two weeks to make it. If you wanted to do it the fast way, some people put like some, I don't know, something to, to, to change the color so it changes pasta and then put some kind of spices to make it, um, to make the taste more similar, but it's not as good. You really need to take your time. That's why we don't make it very often, but once we do, we make a big, big, big bowl of bigos, which is delicious. Another one is something that reminds me of my, my childhood. 
and it's budyń. Pudding. Budyń is a special kind of Polish pudding. So budyń, pudding, it's not exactly the same. So you can say Polski budyń jest specyficzny. Polski budyń jest specyficzny, which basically means Polish pudding is specific. Polish pudding is specific. And it, it is, uh, in a way that it's, um, well, we usually eat it hot, sometimes, sometimes cold, but we usually eat it hot. We, we very often make it ourselves at home. So it is different than, uh, than other puddings I know. So it's more like a yogurt. Uh, but we usually serve it hot and we we have vanilla pudding or, or chocolate pudding obviously and there is raspberry pudding as well or strawberry pudding and um, some people put oatmeal into it or, or like uh, put some um, kind of uh, syrup like vanilla syrup or, or a raspberry syrup on, to on the top of it and that's even more delicious so please try it out. The next one is gołąbki. Gołąbki. Gołąbki um, do not have a translation into English per se, so we just say gołąbki. And gołąbki is a like special rolled cabbage uh, inside of which we have uh, minced meat and we have rice also. Um, the proportion of meat and rice differ between houses and different households. For example, my mom put more rice than meat, but uh, some places they will in some places they will put more meat than rice and there's almost no rice or there's almost no meat or somewhere in between. And we put on we put um tomato sauce over it, which is very delicious. Um and lately I don't eat so much meat, so I, I kind of switch to vegetables or, or fish. So my mom uh, is making me gołąbki with mushrooms instead of meat. That's another way of doing that. And then you can put mushroom sauce on the top of it or just the same tomato sauce. So if you have a Polish boyfriend or a Polish girlfriend and you make the gołąbki for them, you can say zrobiłam ci gołąbki. I made gołąbki for you. Zrobiłam ci gołąbki. I made you gołąbki. I made you gołąbki. Zrobiłam ci gołąbki. The next one is my absolute favorite. And I don't think any Polish person can live without it. And it's pierogi. Dumplings. You may know the name because it's become, it became very, very, very famous around the world. Pierogi, uh, which sometimes are referred to in English as pierogi. Uh, also are called uh, dumplings or Polish dumplings, are this wonderful thing. We have uh, pierogi in many, 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 many different kinds. Like uh, they come in sweet, sour, whatever you want. Probably more than 100 different kinds, but one of the most uh, popular are pierogi ruskie, which you can translate as Russian pierog pierogi, but they are not Russian at all. Uh, they are they are very very Polish, and you have uh, also pierogi with sauerkraut and with porcini with with mushrooms and pierogi with strawberries, blueberries, whatever you like. You can put basically anything. You can put uh, spinach and cheese and whatever whatever you like. But of course, since the Russian pierogi are the most popular. Often people will say, najbardziej lubię pierogi ruskie. Najbardziej lubię pierogi ruskie. I like Russian pierogi the best. I like Russian pierogi the best. So what actually um, is this Russian pierogi? Um, it has inside cottage cheese and potatoes and uh, fried onion, uh, sometimes with bacon or like the small pieces of bacon and you can put it on the top of this as well and you can eat it with sour cream as well which are it's very 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 delicious it's highly recommended please be sure to try it out if you are in Poland the next one is kiełbasa wędzona smoked sausage 
Kiełbasa wędzona, which just means smoked sausage, is very good in Poland. So people think that, uh, for example, Germany has very good sausages, but actually they come to Poland to buy our sausages. So be sure to try it. I know that some people refer uh, to, to this Polish sausage as kiełbasa in, in English. So it became that popular that it's actually a word in English, kiełbasa, which in Polish just means sausage, any sausage. Um, but the specific Polish sausage, it's, it's kiełbasa. And if, for example, you can say, Mama zrobiła kiełbasę wędzoną. My mom made smoked sausage. Mama zrobiła kiełbasę wędzoną. Kotlet schabowy. Pork chop. Kotlet schabowy means uh, pork chop. It's a very, 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 very popular dish for, for Polish lunch. Uh, which in Polish we say dinner, not lunch, but it's actually lunch. For example, you can say na obiad zwykle jem kotlet schabowy z ziemniakami. So in English you would say, I usually have pork chop with potatoes for lunch. And that's true for, for many, many, many people in Poland, Poland, especially for Sunday, Sunday dinner, uh, or actually Sunday lunch, as I said. It's very, very often pork chop. So now we came to the desserts and we have krówki, fudge, fudge, which in Polish we say krówki. Krówki literally means cows or little cows. Um, and we call it uh, krówki because, uh, as you may know, fudge is made out of milk. So basically, is very very related to cows <laughs> and that's our way of thinking so but if you say krówki even if the brand is different and sometimes they call it different way but everybody will call it krówki anyway so for example you can say kupiłam sobie krówki i bought fudge for myself kupiłam sobie krówki rosu rosu now we are going back to the lunch time for a while and let me introduce you to rosu, rosu. So you can just say rosu, and if you don't really know what it is, let me explain it. Uh, it's like, um, is this a soup? It's like a meat-based soup served usually with noodles and maybe small carrots inside, uh, maybe parsley on the top of it. Um, but not a lot of stuff inside. Just usually it's it's um, usually it's uh, um, with chicken, but you don't pour it onto onto your plate. Uh, you just use it to cook the soup itself. And of course, you use a lot of vegetables to cook it. But but you don't really use those vegetables. You may use it later to make the, to make another salad. But uh, rosu it's usually very clear as a soup. So for example, you can say. W niedzielę na obiad będzie rosu. For Sunday lunch, we will have rosu. Which is true for many, many, many houses in Poland. And many people in Poland will eat rosu for Sunday. Uh, it's like, it's so much Sunday lunch. It's, it's really, really, really a very typical thing to eat. Pierniki. Gingerbread. Now, um, going back to sweet stuff. Um, we do have this type of cookies we eat for Christmas and usually it's only for Christmas, although you can buy it all the year round uh, in a little bit different form and some people will buy it like this, but they will make it only for Christmas. It's too much um, hassle to make it and too much time. And it's called pierniki, pierniki, which means gingerbread cookies. So, for example, you can say Mama zrobiła pierniki na święta. Mom made gingerbread cookies for Christmas. And the thing about gingerbread cookies, pierniki, is that once you made it, you can put it into a jar and then keep it there all the year round. Basically, you can eat it almost till like next Christmas. doesn't matter. They are actually getting better and better and better over the time. And I remember when I was little, I loved pierniki and my mom made it for Christmas and then she hid it somewhere. So I don't eat everything. And I basically always almost did. But uh, then um, 
there was always one of those jars hidden and I found it around maybe summer and they were wonderful, super delicious. Basically, they never get old. It's a highly recommended Polish experience, so be sure to try it out. That's all for today. Thank you for listening. Today we did 10 Polish foods. What is your favorite Polish food? Please leave it in the comment and remember to like this video, subscribe to our channel and visit polishpod101.com for more content like that. See you! You may need to say it again, sorry. No, no! This time it's... Yeah, that's the problem. You ask me to say six different things in one brief. <laughs> What is your favorite Polish Polish fluff? Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.